Before we talk about analyzing data using statistics, uh, we want to talk about what types of data sets actually exist. So what does our data look like? So let's think about this in a few steps. So the first thing that we want to know is, is our data categorical or quantitative? And categorical data is non-numerical. Okay, so it's two categories. Let's think about what some new non-numerical data might be. So take a second and think about it. What would be some examples of questions that we might ask that are going to give us a non-numerical answer back? So it might be, what's your favorite color? That would be non-numerical data. We're getting answers purple, green, red. It might be, what types of movies do you like to watch? Are you a rom-com fan? Are you a sci-fi sci fan? What kinds of fruits do you eat? Could even be, what are the chapters in the textbook? Okay, and we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't even have to say chapter one, two, three, and that might even be considered categorical, even though it's a number, because the numbers don't necessarily have, um, they have meaning, but we the the numbers that we're talking about is the content that's covered in the chapter, and the content is non-numerical. So we might have uh, chapter one is about data, chapter two is about uh, statistical analysis, chapter three is about regression. So we're talking about the different types of content that are covered in each chapter. So we could say contents in a textbook. So that would be categorical, but then we also have quantitative data. And it is exactly what it sounds like. This is numerical, right? We talk about the how, how much of something do we have? We talk about that as quantity. And clearly we have lots of things where we have quantitative data, okay? We might be comparing different textbooks and be saying, what is the number of chapters in a textbook? Notice that's different than the content, than the uh, context, contents. Think about other examples of uh, quantitative data. It might be the number of colors that someone uses in a drawing. And when we're talking about data sets, we might be looking at multiple people and saying, how many colors did each of these people use in their drawing? the number of movies someone watches in a year. The number of different kinds of fruits. And notice the use of the word number. Okay, in each of these you see number of in the beginning. So we have number of, number of colors. 
number of movies, number of different colors. All of these are number of. I hope you like my very straight highlighting lines here. Okay, so now that we have this quantitative data, this quantitative data can be classified into two groups. So we have our continuous and we have our discrete. So discrete is countable. That typically means no decimals. Okay. Or another way of looking at it is, can we have half of what we're counting? Okay. In other words, can we have half of a fruit? Can we have half of a color, half of a chapter? Okay. So each of the examples above would actually be discrete data. Okay. We, again, we can't have half of a chapter. We can't have half of a color. If we have, and when I say we can't have half of a chapter, obviously you could read half a chapter, but you can't have half of a chapter in a textbook. We wouldn't say that we have three and a half chapters. We would have three chapters or we would have four chapters. You can't say, oh, well, I use three and a half colors in my drawing, or I watched, um, uh, maybe you watch two and a half movies in a year, uh, but we wouldn't necessarily count that half, right? Um, you wouldn't say I eat four and a half different kinds of fruit, okay? So we typically don't, we can't cut that piece of data in half. Sorry about that. This is an easy way to know that it's a discrete data. Another way is the use of the number of. The other type of quantitative data that we have is continuous. So our continuous data, typically it can have a decimal point, okay? So it can be cut in half. Uh, an example, so take a second, think about examples yourself, even pause the video to think about examples yourself. But 
An example might be the distance that we walk in a day. Right, we can walk 2.3 miles. How often would we walk exactly two miles or exactly one mile? Maybe if we're running a marathon, we run exactly 26 miles, right? But that's really rare. Uh, the weight of a watermelon. This is a great example. Um, a watermelon uh, might be 3.6 pounds. Uh, the amount of space that we have in our suitcases. Right, so suitcase we're trying to pack, we have to know how much space we have in order to fit clothes. Uh, I don't know, maybe um, 1.1 feet cubed. This is what happens when you do videos from your home. You get to hear phones ring. Okay, anyway, so we have continuous data. So we said distance we walk in a day, weight over watermelon, amount of space in a suitcase. Um, but then we can also have bigger classifications for our data. And this would classify into both categorical and um, both categorical and quantitative. Okay, so The first type would be nominal. So nominal, no, nominal, nominal data uh, is categorical. And here there really is no order. Okay, an example here is one that we already used. It would be colors or fruits. Right? There's not really an order to our colors. There's not really an order to our fruits, right? It doesn't matter if strawberries comes before melon. No. Then we have ordinal. So ordinal data is typically categorical. So then the question is, what makes it different from nominal? The difference is, is one, if there are numbers, the numbers aren't meaningful in any way. So it might be that where classifying things using numbers, but there's not really um, any significance to the order. So for example, we might classify mathematical rules as this is number one, this is your first rule, this is your second rule, this is your third rule, but there's no significance as to what is the first, the second, and the third. We're just giving it something to refer to, okay? Uh, it might be uh, if a doctor is saying, what's your level of pain on a scale of one to 10? What they're really asking is, are you in a lot of pain, a little bit of pain? Uh, are you, um, they're talking about, right, a level of pain. Are you, if we're talking about your level of excitement, are you very excited or just a little bit excited? So we're using the numbers to help us identify the data, but it's not, those numbers aren't really what we're talking about. We're really talking about levels of pain or levels of excitement. So in other words, we don't need the numbers 
to describe what we're talking about. And it may have some order, right? We just said, what's your level of pain? Are you very excited? Are you a little bit excited? Or maybe you're not excited at all. Our next type of data is interval. So this is numerical. And this, uh, this has no zero value. So an example would be the date. Right. Um, the date might be May 1st, 2020. OK, so this might be numerical data, but there is no date that's zero. OK, so this would be interval. And finally, we have ratio. So ratio is numerical. There is a zero value. And there could be a ratio to it, okay? So somebody has twice as many of something than somebody else, okay? So for example, um, birthday, number of birthday presents. So you can get zero presents um, and in addition, so we said numerical there is a zero value and uh, can be described as a ratio. So what we mean by that is uh, you can have double the birthday presents that somebody else has. And again, this is a good way to try and distinguish between what is ratio and what is interval. This can be a difficult thing. A, a lot of students have trouble distinguishing between interval and ratio and thinking about, can I write this as a ratio? Uh, can I have half of something that somebody else has? Uh, then, um, then that might be uh, an easier way to distinguish between the two. Um, so let's just take some examples, okay? We'll do three examples. The number of full-time students in colleges throughout the country. So let's identify, is it quantitative or categorical, discrete or continuous if it's quantitative? And 
is it of of these uh, nominal ordinal interval ratio, which one of these is it? Is it? So we're talking about number of full-time students. So automatically, as soon as we see number, this is going to tell us that it's quantitative. As soon as you see that it's quantitative, you're going to want to say, okay, it's quantitative. Is it discrete or is it continuous? So this is number of full-time students. Can we have half a student in a college? The answer is no. So because we can't have half a student, this is discrete. And remember, another way to tell that it's discrete is the use of the words number of, okay? And then is it ratio, is it uh, interval, is it nominal, or is it ordinal? So we can eliminate nominal and ordinal. Remember, nominal is categorical, so automatically that's eliminated. Ordinal is typically categorical, and there's no relationship between uh, the different data values. So here we can say that we have 30 students in one really, really tiny college, and we have 26,000 students in one really, really large college, okay? There, there is a relationship. One college has less students than the other. So it's not nominal or ordinal. So now we're trying to distinguish between interval and ratio. So can we have zero students in a college? That's something that maybe we would argue about. Somebody might have a different opinion, but this is ratio because we can have a college that has half as many students as another college. So this is ratio. So discrete, we can't have half a student. Okay. We also see the words number of. And ratio, we said one college can have half as many students as another. Okay, let's take a second example. Temperatures of meat. Okay. So again, we start off, is it categorical or is it quantitative? Well, the temperature is a number. So temperature would make it quantitative. Okay, discrete or uh, continuous? Well, our question is, can you have, now temperature is in degrees, right? When we talk about it coming out of the oven, at least here in the United States, it's in degrees. So can we have half a degree? And the answer is yeah, sure, we could have half a degree, okay? So this is continuous. So it could be 350.5 degrees. Okay, we have that 0.5 there. That 0.5 is a decimal. And then we're asking, okay, well, nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio. Well, once again, we can eliminate nominal and ordinal. This is not categorical data. Uh, and it, the number does have a meaning, right? The temperature of something is meaningful. Uh, is it interval or ratio, okay? Well, can something have a temperature of zero? Is that meaningful? Well, temperature of zero, let's think about what that means. That doesn't really mean that much. So, oh, we're gonna lean towards interval here, okay? Now, an, a piece of meat could have half the number of degrees, but can it be half as hot as another piece of meat? Not really, right? Temperature is really talking about heat. And we can't say that something is half as hot as something else. So here we would say, no, even the temperature of something, think about the way that we measure temperature, right? Zero degrees doesn't mean that it's 
there's no temperature. Zero degrees, it's still a temperature. So we can't really say that we have half a temperature. That doesn't mean anything. Because what is half of 250 degrees? It's not really 125 degrees. The number is half. But we wouldn't say that the temperature is half. So using the, the zero, it would probably be easier to distinguish this by saying, does it have a meaningful zero? But even in terms of ratio, we can see that this is more interval data. So something must have a temperature. And something can't be half as hot as something else. Okay, let's take one last one. Let's say that we went around and we asked people, what is your greatest fear? Well, in a case like this, your answer isn't going to be one, two, three, four, right? Your answer is going to be my greatest fear is spiders or snakes or soap bubbles. So your greatest fear, this means that it's categorical data, okay? Now, once it's categorical, we don't even have to worry about quantitative, uh, classifying it as discrete or continuous because that's only for quantitative. So this is categorical. And now we're saying, okay, is it nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio? Well, interval and ratio is only for numerical data, so we can eliminate those. So now it's nominal or ordinal. So does it have an order? Can we order people's greatest fears? Well, if we're talking about spiders versus uh, snakes versus soap bubbles, uh, we can't have any order. We can't say, well, one is different from the other. So this is nominal. It has no order. The order isn't meaningful. So those are the different types of data that we have, and that's how we classify it.